Hi, and welcome to lesson 13 on physical layer components. In lesson 12, you saw the basics of a quantum repeater and how it can distribute entanglement over uh, long distances. In here, we will go a little bit deeper and see how each individual uh, physical components of a quantum repeater work. We will begin with step one, the introduction. So here we have a basic scheme for a quantum repeater. We've got our network nodes represented by these blue boxes over here, and they have some qubits. And then uh, the network nodes, they uh, uh, fire photons towards this middle node here, which we know implements a Bell state measurement. And that way uh, we can establish entanglement over uh, long distances. But what are the individual physical components of a quantum repeater, and more importantly, how can we implement them? So first, we need optical fibers to carry our photons. That's kind of obvious, and already we have covered uh, uh, optical fibers in some length. The next thing that we need is the Bell state analyzer in the middle. The analyzer implements our Bell state measurement and is crucial for implementing entanglement swapping. But while the photons are in flight and traveling towards our Bell state analyzer, these qubits, they are stored in the nodes, they are stationary, they're not moving anywhere. So we must have some physical means of storing uh, these qubits. And we do that with the help of quantum memories. Now the difference between classical memories and quantum memories is quite substantial. Classical memories uh, usually store just zeros and ones, only classical bits, whereas quantum memories have to be able to store one, zero, but also any superposition and in fact any entangled state. And that way they can share entanglement over the entire quantum network. Then, so after talking about these three basic, well, two basic uh, components, because we covered fibers already, we will consider how all of these components work together to implement a quantum repeater. And more, most importantly, we will also consider what are the various factors that affect the success rate of our quantum repeater and entanglement swapping scheme. So after this introduction, we will spend the first half of this lesson talking about Bell State Analyzer. We will revisit measurements and how they can actually be implemented and what does it mean really to measure in different bases and how can we implement different basis measurements with uh, Pauli Z measurements and some unitaries. Then we will move on to the uh, quantum circuit for a Bell state measurement. And from that, we will uh, talk about implementation of Bell state measurements with linear optics. So we will consider how Bell state measurements are done in real life. And then in the latter half of this lesson, we will talk about memories. We will begin with considerations about what a good quantum memory uh, should be like, what are the requirements. Then we'll move on to the candidate systems, because at the moment there is no leading physical system that is considered to be the best quantum memory. All of the existing candidate systems have some advantages and some drawbacks, which we will consider in the latter half of this lesson. So let's begin.